and welcome to Tech Talk. I'm your host, Seth Miller, and today we're talking total cost of ownership with FinCom CTO Bill Milroy. Bill, welcome to the show. Thanks, Seth. It's great to be with you. So, these are sort of terms that we use a lot, but let's make sure we're all on the same page. Give me the definition that you're using in this space. Well, we really mean cradle to grave, if you will, from the initial purchase of the equipment that you put on the plane and install it all the way through its operational lifetime, hopefully a long lifetime, and all the way to the time you have to remove it from the plane and refurbish it in case of leased aircraft, maybe even return the plane to its original configuration. So total cost of ownership typically is made up of capital expense, CapEx, and operational expenses, OpEx. How are we splitting those up in the in-flight connectivity space? Sure, by CapEx we mean the one-time items. Those would be purchase of the equipment, installation on the aircraft, perhaps uh, even removal and refurbishment of the aircraft, but just those one-time items. In contrast, OpEx are the recurring items. Generally, we're talking about per year type of items. They would include transponder cost, induced fuel cost, maintenance cost, reliability to the extent it requires uh, changing the equipment out, uh, and, and the overall lifetime of the product too. So you want to have products that have really long legs to them so that you don't have to replace them very often. Um, obviously, you're trying to keep these systems functioning, not breaking, and reducing the maintenance costs of them, which is a big part of this. What are some of the factors that go into an antenna system to keep it low maintenance? Well, there's a couple of factors. Obviously, low maintenance would imply high reliability, meaning that you don't have to take it off the aircraft. You don't have to do routine maintenance. And the way you want to control that is you want to do things in the, in the case of like a, an ESA, you want to keep the junction temperatures low, uh, even in, in, in tough conditions. You want to keep the parts counts low. You don't want to have a lot of gears and a lot of belts, a lot of things to go wrong. Bottom line, you want to have an MTBF, the mean time before failure, that's at least at 25,000 hours, and you'd like to be a lot higher than that if it's possible. You mentioned earlier transponder costs, satellite lease costs. How does the antenna play into keeping those costs down for an OPEX scenario? Sure. Well, the main thing that the antenna can do is to squeeze out as much juice from that grape, if you will. So really what we mean is given an amount of channel bandwidth to work with, the antenna uh, has a spectral efficiency, which will be in bits per hertz. Uh, it could be as high as two or three, could be as low as half to one. It depends on the antenna and all the, all the attributes. The things in the antenna that contribute to that, which are the main things that are driving that particular part of the OPEX for antennas, are the adjacent satellite interference suppression. So that's important on the forward link, the receive part, because you don't want to be jammed by adjacent satellites. That's going to drop the efficiency, the spectral efficiency of your system. On the transmit side, there's regulatory requirements that say, hey, if the quality of your antenna, its pattern and its side lobes, emissions in wrong areas, isn't good enough, we're also going to force your spectral efficiency to be down. And the other big thing would be area efficiency. For a given area, a given radome size, a given fuselage footprint, we really want to get as much gain in, in there as possible. And all these things help contribute to the spectral efficiency and are all attributable pretty much to the antenna. All right, so satellites work in megahertz. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about bandwidth, typically we're talking about megabits. I know I want more megabits on my plane. Right. So how are we converting between those two and what role does the antenna play in that? Sure, well the satellites play a role, but really the antennas, as we were talking about spectral efficiency, the higher the spectral efficiency, the better job the antenna is doing in reducing the OPEX for a given amount of megabit per second. Specifically, to come up with megabit per second, we take the spectral efficiency, which is in bits per hertz or megabits per megahertz, we multiply it by the channel bandwidth, megahertz, and that gives us the total throughput capability of the system. Obviously a higher number is a better number. So, when we talk about the sort of broad scope of OPEX costs over time, what's the impact of the antenna in terms of OPEX costs versus the various other components involved in this? Well, we can't take all the credit on the antenna side. So certainly the satellites moving from uh, FSS to HTS to even XTS satellites, they, they are really doing some dramatic things in terms of driving throughput, both at, whether it be KU or KA band. Now, is that a 4X or an 8X? It's a big number, and so that's key. That's key for bringing more bandwidth to the system. The modem also plays an important role. I don't want to forget the modem. It has to be able to handle the larger symbol rates, which not all modems can do, but we're moving in that direction. They might, might need multiple modulation schemes to be able to exploit all that. And the big part is the modulation code efficiency. There's a limit called Shannon's limit, which is a fundamental, call it a loss of physics, you only can push the modem up so far in terms of its bits and hertz for, for the given antenna capabilities. But you know the modem people are getting awful good. They're getting awful close to Shannon's limit. So that brings us back to the antenna. So the spectral efficiency of the antenna is the multiplier that gets multiplied by those other items. So every time you can double the spectral efficiency of the antenna, regardless of what network you're on, you're doubling the throughput of your system and you're cutting your transponder costs in half. That's a, pretty, that's a pretty big deal. Great, and obviously as these new satellites go up, we've got HTS satellites that are up today. We've talked about XTS going up, there's KU, there's new KA. A lot of new birds going into the sky. 
everyone who's launching one of those is promising lower costs per bit, per byte, per megahertz in terms of consumption. Does that sort of change the demands of the consumer? Does it make some of these efficiencies that the antenna provides less important? I suspect, this is just my opinion, but I think it's shared by a lot of people, that uh, the vacuum will be filled. In other words, if we bring satellite uh, cost, uh, connectivity costs down to the passengers, what will happen? The passengers are going to use more data. So I think it's going to, it'll fill that vacuum. So bringing down transponder cost, improving the efficiency of the antenna is just something that's going to have to happen in order to meet those ever-growing expectations of the airline passenger. Thanks so much, Bill. Thanks to all of you for joining us here on Tech Talk. Take care.